Frank and the Rhino Horn, written by Sandy Robbins, illustrated by Christy Underwood, and published by LaKayla. And here's Sandy Robbins to narrate Frank and the Rhino Horn. This is Frank. He stank. It wasn't his armpits or his feet. It wasn't the cheese he liked to eat. What was it about him that did make him smell? By the end of this story, you'll be able to tell. So Frank loved candy, no matter what kind. Chocolate or taffy, he didn't mind. But soon smelly Frank started to pout. The town he lived in simply ran out. So he began his journey to find something sweet. I'll do just about anything for some candy to eat. And with that, he tripped with a heavy kerplock. He had stubbed his toe on a strange gray rock. Frank scooped it up and said, You're coming with me. Until you give me good luck, I'm not setting you free. So Frank and his stolen rock came into town. There sat an old woman with a sweet and a frown. Frank stopped close to her. She thought, What is that smell? Eyeing her candy, he said, You're not looking too well. I'm old, she replied. My bones always hurt. Where did you find that? He explained. In the dirt. I've heard it said, and I want to believe that rock of yours will quit the hurt in my knees. He thought for a moment as he licked his lips. I'll give you a piece in exchange for chocolate. And so went his day, one after another. He'd find a poor soul with a pain or a bother. A piece of his rock he would give with a promise. Their aching would heal if they would just put it on it. But, of course, this generosity came with a price. He would charge them cupcakes or sweet sticky rice. Day after day they lined up at his door, each with a promise their ailment he'd cure. Quickly he noticed this would not work at all. The size of his rock was becoming quite small. He searched all through town under puddles and pears. What it took to find more, he didn't care. He decided to go back where he'd stumbled on the first. Sure enough. Another lay covered in dirt. He tugged and he pulled and he cursed just a little. This one was stuck. How to get it off was a riddle. A chainsaw, of course. It started with a roar and he grinned. Here we go. The rock moved and shifted. It was a rhino. Shocked, they stared. The rhino ran with a snort. Frank stood with his chainsaw, feeling very short. In that moment he realized what about him stank, not armpits or sweaty feet or sour milk he drank, but his heart was so rotten, corroded by ego, he had almost cut off the horn of a rhino. No wonder it stank, that old heart of Frank. He ran into town with a new set of plans, telling the truth to every woman and man. Never again would he put his greed first. Hurting people and rhinos, that was the worst. And from that moment on, Frank no longer stank. It's true. Each day in South Africa, two or more rhino are killed for their horn by bad people called poachers. The horn is taken to China and sold to people there like the old woman in the story, who believe it will help them get better. Rhino horn is not medicine. It does not make people get better. Rhino horn is made of the same stuff as your fingernails. Please don't buy or use products made from wild animals or bird parts. Like the rhino, they are hurt or killed to make bad people money. <laughs>